How's it going, Chris? It's fun. I'm not like white knuckling it or anything. It's a, we have winter tires on this thing, all wheel drive. It feels fine. It's just frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> just want to get home. Everybody on staff feels the same way about this car and it's just that it makes everything feel so simple under the hood you have a 313 horsepower ICE and an 87 horsepower electrical engine which means you got 400 horsepower in this sedan one thing that we don't all agree on is the transition from electric engine to gas and how smooth it is half of us feel like it does a good job and few people feel like it doesn't and it could use some work. I think we could probably chalk that up to just different driving experiences. Personally, in my experience, I think it's fairly smooth and when you need the power, the gas engine kicks in and it's no problem. It also is approaching 500 foot-pounds of torque, so you just feel confident on the road with the power under the hood. When I was driving, like, 70 miles an hour on the highway and I needed to pass someone quickly because they were kind of driving like an idiot I was able to do that without you know having to floor it and wait for the power to kick in it just is there Ooh. <laughs> steering wise on some of these country roads you got hills turns curves it's just accurate you've great feel through the wheel and you just know where you're placing the car and it's just easy to do on some of these S-curves, the steering is incredibly precise, not to mention it's incredibly fun. That being said, the one thing that I am kind of having a hard time with, and I'm not the only one, is the brake feel seems a little bit inconsistent through each of the drive modes and even within the same drive mode. Sometimes the regen really grips hard on those brakes and other times it doesn't. So it's kind of interesting to have to figure out you know, how much brake to apply at certain times to really get the feel that you're going for instead of just knowing consistently how the braking is going to feel when you press down the pedal. The other thing that I don't like is the sound. So right now, let's see, we are in the hybrid everyday use drive mode. Let's put it into the power mode for sporty driving. And it, there's just it's very quiet in here which is can be nice like I don't want it to sound like a GT 350 R when I'm just driving down the highway but I would when I floor it like to hear a little more than you do here it's just something especially in the sporty power performance mode that I would like to hear more of I like a crackle when I floor it like you know you hear from a lot of Jags. When I'm looking for a more sporty experience having that sound come out of the exhaust would just envelop me in the driving experience better than it does currently. So overall, I'm a fan of Scandinavian design, whether we're talking about vehicles or home decor or home design in general. So it's not 
a shock that I am in love with Volvo interiors and their exteriors. You got the Thor's hammer headlight, which came out like five years ago now on the XC90, and it just looks gorgeous. The way that the turn signals light up on the headlights. We were driving around Grand Rapids last night, and there were quite a few Volvos around us, and every time they turned on the turn signal, I was like, man, that looks fantastic. It looks like a piece of metal that had just come out of a forge. Everything else is fairly minimalist. This is a white car. It gets dirty very easily. We've spent quite a bit on car washes so far, but when it's clean, it really stands out on these gray, cloudy Michigan days. I just got done with a run on the beach in Saugatuck. It is 30 degrees out. It is cold out here and passed by some incredible Scandinavian architecture, which brings me to the interior of this Volvo S60 T8. This interior is phenomenal, and it's not a surprise to me or anybody else who's ever driven a Volvo before because the interiors of Volvos are some of my favorite interiors of any car under six figures. The wood paneling here is just classy. I even like the brown leather. I'm not usually a brown leather fan. And there are like no panel gaps anywhere. Take note, General Motors, because this is what a luxury interior should look and feel like. I've spent, I don't know, six or seven hours driving this thing across the state and then just around the west side of Michigan and a hundred percent of the time I've been comfortable. These seats are incredible. The only thing that I don't like about the seats is the fact that we have to use this touchscreen to turn on the heated seats. In the Subaru, which is another vehicle we're reviewing this week as well, I don't have to look at a screen. I know exactly where the buttons are to turn on the heated seats. This one, you have to have the touch screen to turn on your heated seats. I think getting rid of knobs and buttons altogether is probably, while it's a much cleaner look and adds to the minimalist interior of this Volvo, it also kind of frustrates me a little bit just because sometimes I want knobs and buttons. That way I don't have to look at what I'm doing. I don't have to take my eyes off the road and be unsafe to turn on heated seats or change the radio or whatnot. And the one knob that they do have is the volume knob, which is incredibly poorly placed behind the crystal, the gorgeous crystal shifter. And I keep hitting the shifter every time I'm trying to change the uh, the volume, or I have a coffee here and I can't, can't reach it very easily either. And then to adjust the actual temperature, you press it here and then it brings up this entire panel and I have to take a look. So right now I'm at 64. I like cars to be a little bit cold. I'm wearing winter clothes. So I hit that and you can hit, you know, minus or plus. If you're staring at it or you could just do that. And sometimes I just hit the wrong thing. It just seems a little unnecessary when you could have like a knob or a button below that you don't have to stare at and keep your eyes off the road for so long. The audio system, Harman Kardon audio system, it bumps. You can be riding around and just crank it up all the way and it sounds great. All things that I would expect out of a almost $60,000 Volvo sedan. Another thing that a few of us are conflicted about at the office is this crystal shift knob. I have loved the crystal shift knob since the first time I saw one, which was I think in 2014 in an XC90. Um, our associate editor, Joel Stocksdale, who whom I almost exclusively disagree with on everything, uh, does not like the crystal shift knob, though we do agree with pretty much everything else in this interior. Uh, got cup holders right here. Another nitpick thing that I, I don't know, it's not that I don't like it, I just think it's a little extra for no reason, uh, is the start and stop knob. So you just do that to start and stop the car. I think having a button would probably be just as easy. It's just them being different for the sake of being different, which I know is ironic considering I love the crystal shift knob, which is also just being different for the sake of being different. All right, so here we are with the infotainment system. Very minimalist, it just has a few buttons down here. And if you hit this, it'll show you how to use it. This is maybe the only infotainment system that has a button that shows you how to use it. 
either that's a nice thing for people or it just shows that their infotainment system is a little too complicated and you know maybe make it a little easier so like it says you scroll horizontally to access the side panels and see so you have your different applications here you can scroll down Spotify Yelp glimpse Pandora all that sort of a thing Apple CarPlay if you're plugged in and then each one of these you can tap so we got a map here the audio oh god <laughs> Detroit audio and we're on the west side so it's just static there's no phone connected and Apple CarPlay I don't have connected right now and then you go left and it shows you a ton of vehicle functions which this is the part that I like the most it's very informative you can go and look at your charge and the engine will charge the hybrid battery that's a pretty cool thing you can lock the battery so that it'll be there when you need to use it later you can turn off traction control uh, just different alerts you can turn on and off park assist lane keeping aid and after being in the Subaru Forester that beeps at you constantly it's nice to have an easy way to turn this stuff off and you can also do like headrest fold heads up display adjustments uh, you'll want to do this definitely when you're adjusting the seat and you could go down and see all the different things you could turn on and off and then you can swipe down see your settings owner's manual and set a profile up I am Darth Vader right now and that's my profile I don't know why it's set to that I'm gonna guess it was John Snyder Out of everything that Volvo offers, the sedan, to me personally, is probably the least interesting. I'm more of a wagon guy, but I just found myself staring at this sedan whenever we got gas and I walked out of the gas station and saw it parked there. I was just staring at it and smiling. In addition to maybe some better sound coming out of the exhaust, adding paddle shifters would make this a lot more engaging when it comes to driving. Hopping in and out of the Forester into this. The Forester has them, this does not. I found myself instinctively reaching for paddle shifters, hoping that they were there, and they just aren't. So while I love the driving dynamics, I wish I could have a little bit more control if there were paddle shifters. So the T8 has the battery right now. Battery is almost, actually it has charged itself back up to a quarter. It was dead, we've been on the highway for a little bit, and uh, it drained itself. There is a plug up front, very simple to use. There isn't a ton of range, but I like the fact that it's there for A, the power, and B, when I'm going around town, I don't have to use gas all that often. I filled up a couple times on this trip and we've driven you know, a few hundred miles, but most of the time I was just filling up from a three quarters to full, and I haven't used a ton of gas. The greenhouse, because we have the sunroof, I think is fine. I think it's acceptable. I don't think it's horrible. I don't think it's outstanding. Uh, if we didn't have the sunroof, I think I would feel pretty cramped in here, which is kind of surprising considering the fact that I'm only 5'7". So the seat's incredibly comfortable, and one of the reasons for that is how much you can adjust them. It takes just a little bit to figure out exactly how to adjust everything. You have lumbar support, and you actually have to select on the side of the chair between lumbar support and the cushion extension um, and then you can move it back and forth and then you also have your normal seat movements back and forward but because you can customize them to however you like sitting in it for hours is no problem whatsoever I could probably sleep in this seat if we were parked and not driving uh, no problem actually it leans back pretty far Yep, <laughs> that's as far back as I'm willing to go while driving. But um, yeah, there's just an incredible amount of customization when it comes to the seats. And it just lets you drive all day without feeling like you have driven all day. So I brought up the sticker of this Volvo and 
The base price for the S60 T8 is $55,400, which I think is an appropriate price. The extras that we have in here are the heated steering wheel and the heated rear seats, $750. The metallic paint, $645. I think that's a funny term for the paint because it doesn't look very metallic from the outside. It's just white paint. Uh, we have integrated end pipes that cost $285. The 19 inch wheels are $200 a piece, so another $800 total. And roughly a $1,000 destination charge, which brings the total MSRP of this test vehicle to $58,875, which doesn't seem too outrageous to me. It is an incredibly good looking vehicle inside and out. It performs well and it's a luxury vehicle, so south of 60 feels like a solid price. Sure, the lack of buttons and knobs can be a bit frustrating, and the interior storage is minimal, but there's not much else to complain about with the Volvo S60 T8. I'm definitely jealous of the guys in the Detroit office who get to drive this thing for the rest of the year.